So how are we doing so far? Good, good. It's uh, about a sleeping time in California, but I promise I will not fall, fall asleep. Hopefully, I will not bore you into sleep. There are uh, still two minutes to go. This is my first time in Paris. Uh, so far, I've spent most of my time in hotel room, so I don't know yet. I want to apologize first. Right? I think uh, I didn't really spend too much time on this material. We do prepare a lot of materials in today's presentation, but uh, maybe it's not well organized. So please bear with us. But uh, after the presentation, if uh, you have any questions or any ideas, right, any comments, or maybe if you want to start an open source project, please do let me know. Okay, let's get it started. Uh, my name is Xiang Chen. I work for Huawei R&D USA. Right now, currently, I'm leading an NMV lab in Silicon Valley. My colleague, uh, Prakash, who just officially became a Huawei employee as well. So today, we are going to share our observations, our findings, and our vision about the NMV and uh, how OpenStack can help us through this uh, NMV journey. So I'm not sure how many of you uh, know about what NIV is, right? So I put some uh, brief definition about NIV. So basically, NIV is a, is a network service running on cloud infrastructure. So it's just like a, a, a cloud computing, right? Amazon business model on server industry. NIV is going to be, in our opinion, very, very disruptive. So it, the disruption will not be just in telecom industry. You also impact us, uh, IT and the cloud industry. So before NIV, right, vendors like Huawei, like Cisco, like Juniper, I think we are considered as a box company. So all our uh, solutions are building inside a box. So for example, so this is so-called appliance model, right? So in every appliance, every box, we can commit our service quality. So for example, for things like EPC, BNG, IMS, uh, firewall, CPE, we can, in general, we can say, okay, we can support one million subscribers per box with guaranteed reliability. So as we evolve into NIV model, right, it will be more like uh, this kind of thing. So, so comparison is like the box, right, it's a purposely designed system for spatial applications. But uh, in NIV paradigm, everything will be on top of a commodity hardware, a commodity system. In box uh, pre-NIV, right, everything is tightly coupled. Hardware applications, everything is vertically integrated. But in the NIV, in the post-NIV paradigm, everything will be loosely coupled. Application hardware will be coming from uh, solutions will be coming from different vendors. We will have we we will be seeing uh, layered of uh, solutions, and uh, you will become multi-vendor. Box solution, right, is optimized for low latency and the high throughputs. For NIV, right, this cloud kind of model is optimized for flexibility and efficiency. So in, in NIV model, right, reliability is more important than, no, I'm sorry, availability is more important than reliability. So why NIV, right? So from the leading uh, carrier, right, they are already seeing every year, right, the traffic volume will grow 50%. So in three years, right, the whole total traffic volume will be three to four times more than today's uh, traffic volume. But the, the revenue will be deteriorating, right? So, and it, so most of the carriers will not invest more. So what they are expecting from NIV is that uh, they want NIV, hopefully through NIV, they can somehow find a way to reduce cost and uh, they can find a way to expedite, expedite the innovation and uh, eventually can develop a new income. So this is, uh, this is uh, 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 a typical NIV component architecture, right? At the bottom, it's a physical infrastructure. So the red box, right, is uh, basically where we use an a, a OpenStack 
right? It's a, uh, managing all these uh, virtual infrastructure. On top of that, right, we are trying to create uh, higher level components. We call it virtual network functions. So we will have uh, individual different functions like a firewall, security, video optimization, all kinds of uh, network functions. We have a virtual network function manager. On top of that, right, it's an orchestrator. There's an NVO, right? NV orchestrator. Uh, try to link uh, all these uh, different virtual network functions together and they be eventually become a virtual network service. So that's uh, the NIV architecture. So this slide right, is talking about, uh, on, at the bottom, right, it's a, a typical cloud, IT cloud platform. And uh, at the top, right, this is what NIV is trying to do. Right? We are trying to uh, bring, build uh, all these uh, uh, telco work, workload, something like EPC, BNG, IMS, right? all these on top of this cloud platform. But in between, right, currently we are facing a lot of challenges, right? So things like, uh, for example, we talk about is a layer architecture. So how are we going to define the cost? Which one is going to get uh, more money, right? And uh, also, also the, the SLA, right? How are we going to define the SLA? How about the security, right? How about the performance? So we are really facing a lot of problems. Not to mention the blue part, right? Because of this, uh, all these uh, distributed cloud kind of a business model, uh, customers and the carriers we are and the users why right, we are having more expectations about this, the whole thing, so become more and more challenging. So here we are sharing some of our real observation from Huawei's point of view, right? Basically, from uh, three, uh, three, four different areas, right? From performance point of view, from what hypervisor right now, we are seeing uh, great performance loss, right? And uh, there's no real time support things like this. Also, uh, from this. Uh, 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 resource management point of view, right? Right now, uh, OpenStay is designed kind of a starting from a system engineering point of view, from bottom to top, right? Currently, from NLV, right, we are trying to see if we can have uh, another, just like uh, uh, this uh, container, this uh, ecosystem, right? We can have uh, some kind of uh, another layer of abstraction to manage all the resources. And the uh, other challenges like uh, the stability, right? Right now, we are seeing that uh, after we scale the uh, open state cluster up to hundreds of machines, uh, hundreds of VMs, right? We are seeing a lot of uh, scalability issues, a lot of bug issues, right? That means uh, maybe doing a uh, testing in the open stack. Maybe we need a better testing mechanism or better testing environment to test this uh, large scale kind of a deployment. Also from education's point of view and from communication point of view, right? We are, this is basically some real challenges that we are facing uh, from, from within our company. So, to address those challenges, right, we have some ideas. So before we look into dig into those ideas, right, let's share with uh, uh, let, let, let's be in sync on some of the, the trend of history. So the very first one is a computer service, right? As we can see, we go uh, the whole computing industry coming from mainframe, right, up to personal computers. So the trend is that the Everything st starting from this shared centralized uh, quantity, very few sites, very big, very generalized, right? Toward these trends, uh, decentralized, become more and more distributed. Size uh, become smaller and smaller, quantity become more and more, uh, much, much, much more closer to the users, and the user will have a better controls. It's more user driven, and from one to many to one to one, right? To the personal computer kind of uh, era, this kind of uh, paradigm. So we are seeing currently a lot of uh, uh, ICT things in ICT industry right, are still in this uh, so-called mainframe kind of mode. For example, our, our router, our main router, EPC, BNG, right? Even, I'm sorry, even today's cloud, in our opinion, right, is considered as a mainframe model. So very, very soon, uh, uh, according to our prediction, right, something will be happening, right? Something called personal cloud, a new PC will be coming out. So what is a personal cloud? Maybe we can have some other time to talk. But uh, in order for personal cloud to happen, right, NIV will play a very, very big role. So the second trend right, to share is uh, modularity, right? layers and abstraction. I think all of you are very, very technical. You should know, maybe a lot of you are no, no, know this better than me. right? We have an OSI model. We have a hypervisor abstraction. We have a SDN controller. right? All these are designed to uh, to make sure it's, uh, all this will become very easy to evolve, very easy to manage, and very easy to understand. So this is another thing, right? Cattle over pets. Uh, pets. So right now in, in this cloud uh, paradigm, right, we should try to design things and use resources like a cattle. That means uh, cattle are disposable, right? And the instances are, are now unique, right? And uh, we can replace if necessary, and we can shoot a cattle when it's sick. 
right? It's not like a pet, right? Who has a name? This is another thing, right? I think especially in city industry, I think a lot of people will need to be educated for this. Before, we always talk about 5.9 uh, in the uh, uh, hardware appliance. Right now, as we move toward this uh, virtualization and uh, this uh, cloud paradigm, right, all this uh, av availability responsibility will be shifted to the application layer. And the hardware will become more and more commoditized, right, and become less av uh, available and uh, less uh, reliable. So uh, before we move on to the uh, next example, right, next, uh, ne next region, let's share what, what, what is the uh, uh, network working today, right, starting from our mobile phone, right? If we access an OTT or a website from our mobile phone, right, basically you will go through all this, right? You will go through a terminal, then to access uh, like a Wi-Fi or 3G, 4G, or go to a core, and go to a core like an EPC, right? If we go through wireless, right? Then go to a service there before internet, then eventually reach the internet and to the OTT service. That's the general uh, uh, network, uh, this, uh, this uh, telecom infrastructure. So if we go through this uh, SS core and the uh, service, right? Traditionally, if we have, uh, for example, more than 10K uh, traffic stream coming in, right? You, all of them will go through the share pipe, then go to a, a very big share box, then another share pipe, another box, another share pipe, another box, right? Each box inside, maybe there's a, a lot of several uh, 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 components, individual components. So character characteristic of this, uh, this picture is that everything's shared, right? Resource pipe is decentralized. It's fixed a lot appliance. Quantity very, very few. Size very, very big. And uh, every box can only be generalized, cannot be customized for any specific user. Every bus is very complex, and every bus is very, very expensive. So in our point of view, right, this is so, in our point of view, it's a so-called mainframe model. And before NAV, right, this is the only model possible. And uh, that's why carriers spend a lot of bucks, you know, all these expensive bucks, for example, buying from Huawei, something like that. So after NAV, right, we are seeing another possibility. That means uh, instead of going through one share box, maybe to a very extreme, right, every user can have a, a dedicated virtual link. Each link can have a dedicated virtual appliance, virtual machines, and uh, everything, all, all the network topology can be different, can be personalized, can be customized. So characteristic is that everything is dedicated, secured, isolated, distributed, mobile, flexible. Quantity, a lot, size, very, very small. Everything can be customized. Everything becomes very simple and cheap. So, in network in the in city industry, this is a very new concept. But in server industry, as you can see from Amazon, right, this is not new any, at all. So in our point of view, right, it's more like a PC model in networking. So, so, so look at the, today's uh, NFV market, right? Uh, as we can see, a lot of the uh, existing NFV implementations are still mainframe style. That's the major reason that the, every time when we talk about the, the benefit of NIV, right, a lot of things people are talking about can only talk about saving, nothing else. So NIV really ignites the so-called PC style disruption, both in business model and technical architecture. And actually, next thing after PC, right, will be mobile style. What is mobile style? That means that your EPC, your CP, CPE will become mobilized. So that will be another great thing to be happen. So the market is moving from operator-centric to so-called user-defined. It means that before, when a company like Huawei produces an uh, appliance, right, the target customer is an uh, operator. But right now, if uh, everything becomes personalized, becomes dedicated, becomes PC style, right, we should think about maybe it's not operator anymore. right? Just like uh, right now, I'm on the virtual machine. It's not for a uh, service provider anymore. right? It's for any user like you and me. So same thing is going to happen in the CT industry. if. Uh, according to our prediction, right? So focus will sh be shifted from operator to operator's customer. So two questions, right, we need to ask ourselves, and uh, this may uh, bring in a lot of opportunities. First one is like, what is Amazon AWS cloud business model in NFA paradigm, right? Amazon AWS talk about utility computing, right? Is there any ut so-called utility networking coming out? What will be the technical architectural evolution, right, that enables Amazon AWS Cloud, like, like this kind of uh, capability, right? Is there any new technical architectural evolution going to happen in this, uh, after this NIV paradigm? So things to look at is that maybe new abstraction, further decomposition, or new composition is going to happen. So, so, we, so in the following slides, right, we are going to share what we did, right? 
uh, starting uh, two years ago. I think starting two years, two years ago, I, we started uh, from OpenStack. Because OpenStack has a very flexible architecture, this is a componentized architecture. So we try to see if we can add one more module over here, right? We create a module called Quantum Leap, right? It's uh, basically talking about this uh, virtual uh, mobile node, right? We are trying to address uh, this uh, as a mobility network uh, kind of a, a problem. So we are trying to see if we can, first of all, create an additional component just for the mobile network. And uh, we decompose the VEPC and the virtual network function layer and uh, create corresponding uh, VNF and the orchestrator. That's uh, how we started uh, two years ago. Then today, right, this is today's picture. Because uh, after we dig into, into it, right, we found out a lot uh, more and more, more problems com coming out, more and more challenges coming out. So currently, we are working on with uh, a lot of different kind of scenario. At the initial structure layer, we are working on, on the bare metal, the traditional virtualization, the containerization, and uh, this uh, virtual a uh, APP kind of a scenario, right? Also from this, uh, this uh, VIM, right, virtual infrastructure manager point of view, we are also trying to look into this, uh, this uh, something like a missiles and uh, Kubernetes, right, to see if uh, it can provide a better resource management to the upper, upper layer. At the virtual network function layer, right, we are trying to create some kind of a, a path platform because the idea is that the, the reason, one of the reasons for NIV is to allow any startup company, right, as long as you have some kind of uh, interest in pro, uh, development, in programming, or in coding, right, you can, by just writing maybe a uh, couple hundred lines of code, you can right away create a new VNF and bring your innovation on top of this platform. Right away, you can deploy it over the world, right, in, in this uh, telecom uh, infrastructure. That's what we are trying to achieve uh, through this uh, path, right? So we create, uh, internally, you create this uh, VNF uh, path. We also create a VNF path and orchestrate the same thing, right? Everything, we, we make it pluggable, highly flexible. Actually, a lot of experience we were learning from, actually, from OpenStack community. So the next slide is, uh, uh, I, I was just talking about today, right? So tomorrow, actually, how are we going to build this uh, so-called personalized, customized, highly flexible, this kind of uh, uh, virtual network link, right? So this is what we are thinking. So this slide should be very familiar to most of you, right? Forget about the uh, text inside, right? Before, before we look at the picture, you will see a, a so-called server infrastructure. Then you have a KVM and VMware hypervisor. They have a lot of virtual machines. Right now, we are trying to see, right, is it, is it possible to create similar kind of a, uh, architectural diagram? But uh, for underneath, right, it will be, for example, AT&T's uh, physical infrastructure. Then we create a, uh, maybe an open source hy enable hypervisor. On top of that, maybe China Mobile's infrastructure is, a, is one of the virtual network infrastructure. Huawei's internal IT company's uh, network infrastructure is another virtual inf network infrastructure. My whole, ne whole network uh, maybe could be the third one, the virtual infrastructure over there. So eventually, maybe we can create something like a, uh, something like Amazon AWS, but uh, it's not for server anymore, it's for network. So this is another picture looking at, looking at this, right? So we have a physical uh, ingress and the egress uh, traffic uh, going through physical infrastructure. Um, through this hypervisor, right, if we bring in this uh, SDN uh, 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 technology into this uh, guest domain, and uh, we allow different users, even people like you and me, can freely create the topology, whatever topology we, we want, we need, right? Eventually, maybe you, you and I or your company can very easily become a virtual operator and can own a virtual mobile network infrastructure or any network infrastructure. So, so, uh, so, I, I'm sorry, I think uh, I'm moving faster than I suspected. <laughs> I should start by and ask whether you have a question. So this uh, topic, right, this, the topic of this session is talking about empowering customer-centric NIV. So who are the customers, right? In our point of view, right, any user, developers, carriers, and the ecosystems, right, they are all considered as customers. So if we are going to build a a, a new paradigm, a new framework, right? A new system, a new product, right? We need to consider all this together, right? Because uh, uh, just like OpenStack, right? Without any of this, right? It will not become successful. So this is my last slide, right? Currently, we are, uh, as you know, right? From NIV point of view, uh, carrier and uh, 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 some vendors, uh, including Huawei, we created a new open source project called OPNIV. The full name is called Open Platform for NIV. 
So the idea is that we are not going to reinvent a vehicle. We are not going to create any new open source project. Instead, we are going to create a so-called integration project, which is going to integrate a lot of upstream open source projects together and create a reference uh, uh, architecture just for the NLV uh, use case and the use case scenario. So, so this, this one just got started in September. And uh, OpenStack plays a very, very big role in this uh, OPNIV project, in, at least in the initial phase. So, so if uh, you are interested, I feel free to come in, come join this project to contribute. So, okay, that's uh, all I have for today. Mm -hmm. Any, uh, so I, 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 I went through the slide very, very quickly, right? So if uh, any one of you wants to discuss more about one, any of these slides, Please uh, feel free to let me know. Yeah, I, I'll just add a bit of it. Of course, it's in lighter mood, and don't take it too seriously. So first thing we observed, a uh, couple of, of course, last Atlanta, I believe, and even before that, Hong Kong, we used to call NFE, and we were told, it's not for vendors. NFE, what does it stand for? Network Function Virtualization. But it was initiative by carrier. So in the lighter way, we used to see backdoor people say, hey, it's not for carriers. Don't touch it. It's not for carriers. It's not for the uh, customers. It's only for the carriers. Now you see a new initiative you saw, op and a fee. So lighter side will say, it's open for vendors now. It's op and a fee is open for vendors. So next time when you come, next summit, you'll be hearing, open. we are open for customers now. So the basically, evolution occurs. It started with carrier, it has gone to the vendors. Now vendors, it's open for vendors. Tomorrow, next summit, we'll say it is open for customers. Basically, it's evolution. So the idea behind is you carry home, when you go, you think over it. Hey, what happened? We started with something like a op NFE, do a lot of, uh, so NFE started, we did a lot of theory. NFE, it's the NFE is an organization, it's a standard body. All the architecture, they, Drew, but at the end of it, you need something concrete, right? People cannot just, oh, it's a IT, we say Java, it's a reference IT, uh, architecture, right? I, but where is the implementation? And that's where you see that need for vendor is there now. But tomorrow you'll see, okay, vendor is there, but what? Vendor can do something, but who will use it? Then comes the customer. So then comes the subscribers. So ultimately, it has to evolve. And OpenStack is one of the primary places where we are able to gather that kind of a practical knowledge which, which has come from, right from starting from NOAA to Neutron to uh, Cinder to Ceph to you name it, the core reference which is there. And way beyond that, now we are seeing that even for policy implementation, we need Blazor, we need Congress, and you need Icon uh, Ionic for the bare metal. So, the carrier grade requires those kinds of uh, hardening, and which is where the OpenStack has been the key. But OpenStack alone, can it deliver? Had it been able to deliver, we would have been happy. But you see that we had an NFE group. I don't know many of the NFE groups are there. And you look at it, what kind of things are going. They are at the lower layer, they are looking at, OK, I need to fix the high availability. I need to fix the fault tolerance. I need to increase the availability. But uh, going above, then you see, OK, that's fine, but I need more than that. So what do I do? OK, at platform layer, OK, I have a solemn IO, I have a heat for orchestration. So OpenStack has done it, but essentially OpenStack has been focused at the lower layers, and which is what we call WIM, which is, so these are the challenges which you see are the key factors for anybody to get implementation. So that's why I said that, Andy Grew, you know, when he, he said for Intel, ISDN, it still does not work. Same way, NFE, not for Windows. From that, you have moved on to now, open for Windows. And we want to see that it is open for customers. Because op without you, without the subscriber, who is going to pay for it? So that's the key. And why would you pay for it unless you get services you want? You want a voice, video, data, you want all in one, combined. So OTT is the, OTT play has been very good, which has, you have seen that in the Google world of, Googles of the world, they have been able to capitalize on it. Whereas, in spite of the best efforts from the OpenStack community, 
including the open FE community and future community, we are going to see that it's hard to meet these challenges. Service level agreement, if you say SLA, you go into QoS. When you go into QoS, you say, OK, I want this much bandwidth for this video. Whereas if I'm moving in a low place where the bandwidth is low, I would rather still have that particular with a lower resolution. So the QoS has to be met. And this is depending on the bearer, what kind of bearer you are getting, whether you are getting over there, you are going along the, along the pipeline at end to end. So end to end SLAs are very hard to get. Capacity planning, you look at it. Go to any carrier, they do always the design from core towards the end. That is, the core will be the primary where you will define this much is my capacity. You do dimensioning, they call it. You lower down the capacity. At the subscriber, you want the minimum. So capacity planning is one of the thing which is important. Troubleshooting, of course, you have F caps, you have fault, configuration, accounting, performance, security, F caps as they call it in their carrier terminology. So you have to be able to do the configuration, any break in the configuration, any dynamic operation, be able to capture the data from by instrumenting into the nodes, collect that data, analyze the data, and be able to figure out what is wrong. Yeah, maybe let's uh, so spend five more minutes to go yeah. through this uh, the pricing. Our, our observation, right? Yeah, just, just a second. Pricing, okay. you saw the pricing, right? How do you do the pricing? Do you do by minute? Do you do by volume? And do you do both? Because I may be talking at the same time, I may be viewing, so viewing may be in terms of number of gigabits, whereas talking may be in minutes. So the pricing is an issue here. How do you price it? How much, what unit of measure you price how much? It's not like it's based on timing alone. So there is a complication there. And plus, if you have millions and millions of subscribers to collect the data, CD or what they call call detail record for every, every subscriber and to build them and to build them correctly, it's a humongous challenge. And so it's a volume issue. So I think policy management, all of you know, policy, whether you should apply policy to the subscriber, policy to the network, who decides, what is the agreement with the contract with the, and is it going to be used neutron-based policy are we going to use? Are we going to use, a, where is the application of it? Where is the enforcement of it? So there are challenges. So every piece of this security, you name, everything has a challenge. And that is why people are not able to deliver that in spite of our best effort. We are all human beings. And we want to do our best. But yet, there is a limitation. And that's the message I want to give, that as a Huawei, as a corporate, it has its own responsibility. We can't be every time, no Cisco, no Cisco. We, who are we? Who are we? Not that. Remember that this design going beyond the vendors, it's the overall, what do you call the uh, inherent nature which a organization changes, that's important. And we believe Huawei has a very sincere, very sincere way of going about, in spite of what people say or what governments say, they oppose each other, we want to be really good so that it helps the community. That is our message to you, and thank you very much. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I think uh, I really want to go back to sleep, I think. So this time I really overdid it. Every time I always uh, need more time, right? This time, strange. Anyway, so actually, uh, in NIV, right, we really think uh, there are a lot of opportunities, right? Because, uh, because, uh, because uh, as I mentioned, this is a disruptive uh, kind of a, a, a model. So you, it's a new, business, uh, new business models, new technical architecture will be coming out. So for us, why right, we are especially interested in this, uh, some of the slides, right? Uh, the hypervisor, network hypervisor. If any one of you uh, have uh, any comments, right, regarding something like this, right? We are, we are thinking maybe this is a good opportunity. We can really do something from open source community point of view. Because once we are able to virtualize the network infrastructure, maybe there's a, 
there's an opportunity for some, something for a local network hypervisor, this kind of abstraction. So like later on, right, if we can, anyone, just like a, maybe later on there will be something like an Amazon AWS platform, right? Everyone can go in and the, the, the host could be companies like AT&T, right? And if I need a, a, a network for my company or network for my home, or even I want to become a virtual operator, so I, I can very easily through a console create a virtual infrastructure right away, just in time, right? On demand, right? And the uh, and the uh, and 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 the uh, from company from then uh, through using these uh, technologies like SDN combining with NIV, yeah, maybe we can create a lot of possibilities, right? Eventually, we are even seeing. For, uh, to every one of us could, can, could become a, a mobile operators. And the, we also see that the more and more new traffic, right? Something like IoT, Internet of Things, D2D, M2M, those traffic will be, happen, uh, will be happening locally, right? Uh, 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 by the edge. So if we can create this kind of a platform by the edge, right? For example, AT&T, if we can convert a lot of uh, this uh, existing central office also, or this uh, pub office, right? Into this uh, cloud-like uh, this uh, capability, with a cloud capability, kind of this kind of platform, then companies like Netflix, right? They can, whenever they deploy service, they don't want, need to deploy centralizedly somewhere in in, uh, in the country, right? They can deploy highly distributed around the edge. Then, no matter the performance or or or, or quality or latency, right? A lot of problem will become kind of a trivial, right? And then it's gonna ignite a lot of uh, a lot of innovations. So I think. We are open out for Q and A. If you have any questions, please do ask, and uh, we will answer you with our best knowledge, whatever we have, or we can take it offline also. Anybody, any questions? Looks like everybody has understood everything we have delivered. Quite a bit, I believe, or nothing is understood. Either of the two. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Welcome. Yeah, yeah, come, yes, come. We are here to answer you with our best what we can. Yeah. Can you can you tell me the difference between network hypervisor and SDN controller? I don't understand the new the, the difference you're making there. Uh, over here, right, we can see there's a hypervisor. On top of hypervisor, we can create a lot of guest domain. I, I try to demonstrate that we can for the hundreds or thousands of different virtual network infrastructure. So each network infrastructure may have a one or many one uh, at least a one network topologies, right? So. The reason we can put a SDN controller over here is that uh, maybe some part of the control will be will, will still will be confined to to the operator, but uh, most of the uh, capabilities right, will be empowered to the users within that domain. So it's just like a, a super user of that, uh, the the guest domain, right? So this a uh, uh, SDN kind of a, 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 a controlling mechanism. We can make uh, the management very very easy. So yeah, I. Add to it, your question was, what is the difference between SDN controller and network hypervisor? So the answer is simple. SDN only deals with network domain, specific to network. That means it will do flow control, it will use the open flow, it will interact with the uh, networking, that's all. But when we say network hypervisor, it, like you have a domain in NFE, there is something called domain. You have storage domain. You have processor domain. If you combine the processor and CPU domain, that is one domain. You have network domain. Whereas here we talk about network and hypervisor. So it is CPU domain and network domain combination. So of course, we have our own views. Each one has their view. But anything that is like that, which is not sure, then everybody has some idea, and eventually it grows to some idea. So we are throwing some idea into the market that we want to do something like network hypervisor. What would you think it is? So good question. Thank you. Any other questions? There was one gentleman there. What was that? Same question. Yeah, it is. It's a. That's why I said no. It's like you go back to history. Uh, when said Bill Gates said, "Oh, dot net." All of Microsoft didn't know what the hell this guy is talking about. He's saying .NET. Same way, it's a network hypervisor. We ourselves don't know what we are talking about. That's what happens sometimes. But eventually, you come to oh, realize, OK, there is something special about it. There is some value for it. And we have to come up with the value and the architecture and go from there. So we look forward to 
having debate on that, what is good, how will it evolve, we have to see. But these are some of the things you always think about it, okay? One thing I want to add is that uh, within this uh, guest domain, right, every appliance will become a lot more simpler, uh, very simple. Because uh, it doesn't need to, feel for just, just like mainframe and the PC, right, you, you can still do the job, but uh, a lot of things like uh, uh, SS control, security management, this isolation, all these will become 70 to 80% of the code, right, will, will, be, will become unnecessary and will not be included. So look, no matter it's a, a HDN controller over here or all these appliances within this network topology, right, everything will become very, very small, very simple. So that's why, that's the, 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 the that's when I think, we think, right, we can use a container, right, a smaller, con lightweight container to, to handle this kind of a traffic load, the personalized load. Any more questions? I think people are satisfied. You know, in half an hour what we can deliver and we have to imagine. I hope you have learned something from this and next time we will See again in Vancouver. Hopefully, we'll be talking about. <laughs> we are open for customers. Thank you, Ramesh. Yeah, do feel free to email us uh, or or send us uh, any questions. Right, if you are interested in in, in discussing more about the, the details, right, feel free. We are in uh, Silicon Valley in California. So if you are also from there, right, maybe you can have a lunch or something. Okay. Mercy. I hope I. Thank you very much. <laughs>